Hi everyone, this is Kirsten at Soul Light Hypnotherapy. Welcome to my channel. I just wanted to share something really interesting with you, and it's kind of going to be kind of long. But um, I decided to, it's a rainy Friday morning when I did this, I decided to uh, just ask about what's, what's up for me, what's coming up for me in my weekend. And um, in speci especially in um, regards to love and money. And I had just gotten done turning off the television set, watching snippets of the inauguration. And um, so it was in my mind, but it wasn't uh, my question. My question was, how, how will my weekend fare for me? And I got a spread from the Sibylla cards that is completely about um, our President Trump. <laughs> so I didn't ask for it. I didn't shuffle it on camera. Um, I don't even use video, so I use photographs. So you have to take my word for it. I'm not smart enough to lay these cards out the way they they fell on purpose. They This is how they have arbitrarily came out. And it was very clear to me that the Sibylla cards wanted to chat with me about the presidency today, the inauguration and our new president, Trump. So just bear with me because I'm, I do not have these cards memorized verbatim, but pretty much the interpretation of the cards stand alone in um, depicting their story today. And the uh, Italian La Vera Sibilla, I, think, I believe in Italian, in Italian that um, name means the chatty ones, and they decided to spill the tea with me today. And I want to share it with you because I think it's really interesting. So here we go. The first card out is the Casa card, uh, the Two of Hearts. And it came out upside down. And this card just fell out while I was shuffling. So I'm using it as my theme card. Um, for me, it depicts the overall theme of the uh, reading. Okay? And at the time, it didn't even occur to me because, again, this was a personal reading, that this is a White House upside down. Um, so, let me just read to you what this card means in reverse. This card represents a house that is foreboding and depicting a stifling environment. It squashes the freedom of others and their self-expression. This house is no longer a nurturing environment. I took this as, once I realized that this was a reading for the presidency, I um, will go ahead and interject my interpretations. And what I'm, I'm believing this is saying is that there's decisiveness in the, uh, the, in the uh, White House now. The White House is upside down. It's no longer representative of a nurturing environment. It it's, it's doesn't feel inclusive of all people. It's now a hostile place, devoid of love and protection. It represents, when reversed, this card represents and depicts snares and deceit within a family. A place or situation that blocks avenues of growth and expansion. It gives one the feelings that they're restricted and that their hands are tied. And it heralds separation. It brings a source of constant worry, a feeling of unsupportiveness and not being loved. Now, the first family lives in the White House, and this is saying uns an unsupportive family. So I think that the people in the United States um, don't particularly feel, the majority of people, I'm not saying all people, and remember, I, um, everything I'm saying here in this reading is just the musings of a middle-aged woman on a rainy Friday morning, okay? These are all just, just musings from an oracle card reading for entertainment purposes only. Nothing is being said to um, accuse. These are allegedly, okay? The word allegedly will preface the entire reading, okay? All right, going forward. So, this card um, depicts a family that doesn't support one another. It doesn't support its, its uh, members. And we, the people, are the members, right? So we don't feel, the majority of people in America don't feel supported by this new first family, by this new White House, this new government. 
This car can also predict a divorce or serious arguments within the family. And as a building, it represents renovation needed um, and something not being quite right within the foundation of the building. And I believe I'm interpreting this to be the to uh, mean there's something not quite right in in this government in its new in its foundations in in who is making up the government. Here, not only can it represent the White House and the first family, but it's representing the structure of government. As a building, this card can also represent a mental health asylum, a police station, a hospital, a prison, an unwelcome public building. I found that to be so funny. It also represents, because of the um, closed shutters on the top layer of windows, that this is a place where things are concealed, kept from, kept from the general public, things that are concealed, things that we need to know, but things that we're not privy to. And in financial matters, this card represents shady business deals, transactions, bad investments, poor family budgeting. And it speaks to hereditary diseases. I wasn't sure why I said that when I first read this, why it caught my eye. But I asked my mother, she said something about there being some sort of hereditary disease in the Trump line. I don't know anything about it, but I'm just saying the cards are expressing that. And it, it emphasizes again, this card represents a lunatic asylum. So it's kind of saying, the White House has now become a house of lunatics that are governing us. <laughs> Next card out. We got the uh, Four of Diamonds. Four of Diamonds is depicted by a black cat guarding the pantry in a kitchen on a green chair. And its Italian name is Falsita. It's um, it's um, English title is falseness. This doesn't represent the family pet. This card represents lies, false adulation, and compliments given with an ulterior, ulterior motive. It stands next to the Grand Signore card. So this is a court card. It represents a person. And when the Falsita card is next to a court card, it represents the character of that person. And just to um, tell you a little bit more about Gran Signore. Gran Signore is a, um, he's the king of hearts. He's the, um, the man we all love and adore, the man of the moment. He's also, to me, represents kind of like our divine leader. For me, the Gran Signore often represents when God is talking to me. I like to think it as God hearing me, talking to me. So to me, it represents kind of like the Grand Poobah, the great source. I think here it's talking about our president. He's our grand leader. So this card represents the presidential office, the office of president. And next to it is the Falsita card, which says this is... Um, a person with ulterior motives. Um, they like false ad they give false adulation and compliments and they like to receive it. This card represents people as it uncovers their true intentions. It represents someone who's two faced and who plots. Plots against the people in his environment. And in this case, I'm going to say the people are the people of the United States, okay? Plots against the people. Plots against the people in his environment. It represents murky and thorny situations. Situations that are woven with a tight web of lies and deceit. I'm reading this straight out of the book, guys. 
It represents someone who's skilled. The people around this person, they're not aware of the true state of affairs. They're not aware of the true um, intentions of this individual because they're smart and they're skilled but this individual knows how to deceive them so this card represents someone who is taking advantage of the good faith of others having said this this card can also represent someone who is an adopted child now why do I why do I even mention this because I uh, now I'm clearly I know this is this is about the president or um, it's tell it's telling me about what it feels this president is all about so why do I why do I mention this adoptive child part this adopted sibling an adoptive parent a stepchild <clears throat> someone with no blood ties to their, their, their surrounding um, environment of people. <clears throat> Excuse me. No blood ties, I think, is significant. Okay? I, I'm, I'm mentioning that because Trump is not a true Republican. He's, he was adopted by the Republican Party, really, or he adopted the public, Republican Party to, to run for the presidency. He's not truly a Republican. His views aren't truly Republican. They adopted him because he had the power through the Fortuna card and the rise in status, the rise in popularity enough, the rise in um, being enough of a contender that they backed him. But he's not, he wasn't their chosen one. He was adopted. And I think blood ties refers to just a little bit of those conspiracies out there. And not everybody believes in cons conspiracies. There's a lot of them. But there's such things as the blue bloods or um, a bloodline of rule, an Illuminati bloodline of rule. And there's a lot of people that believe that, that only those that are within the bloodline, and even Obama, I have, I have been told and I have read, is distantly related to the Bush family and the Cl Bushes are related to the Clintons and all of this stuff kind of goes back to Charlemagne that's kind of the um, conspiracy right that only those that are within the bloodline become our presidents become our rulers but this card specifically says this guy is, has no blood ties so uh, he was a surprise surprise is indicated by the um, the card um, the three of hearts it's the card of a woman she's on a kind of like a ship deck she's looking out into the uh, unknown with a telescope this means surprise arrival it was a surprise right we got the fortuna card next to this to, to the three of hearts that he won the election to everyone including to himself He's not happy about it with the um, the three of spades card, the widower, the man who is mourning, mourning so, uh, someone's grave. He's not really happy about it. But let me take it card by card. So we're on the um, falsita card still, right? So someone who's adopted. Not doesn't have blood ties. This all this card also calls our attention to a specific room in a house. He's next to the white house that is now in disarray, disrupted, not right. And next to the Grand Signore is a gentleman in a chair in an office. Uh, the Oval Office. Anybody? Does that <laughs> kind of? Ring a bell, the Oval Office, and then next to the uh, gentleman in the office at a desk with a book under his hand, which is the Seven of Hearts, is the um, Ace of Diamonds card, 
which is a stands for a room. So I think it's confirming a room in the house, the um, private rooms of the president. So there's falsity in the private rooms of the president. This card indicates illegal activities, contraband, fake goods, illegal merchandise, or a person who meddles in the affairs of people. And his meddling has dangerous consequences. This card is also very bad, this falsito card, when it falls next to a group of people, a card that represents a group of people. Now, if you see down below the Grand Signore, down below the Fortuna card, in the center at the very bottom, in the middle row, is the Le Allegre card. And that is the Nine of Clubs. And the Nine of Clubs is, what is it called in English? It's called happiness. But it represents a group of people celebrating this new president. See the, um, do you see the Fortuna card? She's holding a cornucopia. You can, some people also call this a trump. T-R-U-M-P, trump. It looks like a saxophone or a tr or actually like a trumpet, like a trumpet. She's actually holding a trump, guys. I asked about my weekend. I didn't ask about the presidency. This just fell out, so I'm sharing it with you. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just, I just find it interesting. I just want to share it. So, <laughs> divinely ordained win of the winner, the divine ordained winner, now our leader, with the Grand Signore above her, she's holding the trump. So he won, right? He's being celebrated by those in his office, those in his party. Those he's had, a, he's at a party. This this man below in the Allegra card, the happiness card, he's holding a drink, he's holding booze. They're holding booze. They're also sitting really close to each other. Maybe they're sharing a secret. I'll get to that later. So, back to Falsita. Because it means so much, and everything seems to apply. I don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> this card indicates something that's done in an illegal way. In a private room. In secret. It also indicates... Dang uh, uh, dangerous dealings and consequences due to meddling in other people's affairs. Curiosity killed the cat. What do curious people do? They sneak around. They find secrets. They snoop, right? Isn't that the hacking? Doesn't that kind of sound like the hacking? Okay. It does to me. This card indicates negativity. And it's particularly bad when it's near a group of people. Let's go back to the happiness card. It implies that someone, in this case Trump, because it's directly under the Trump card, is living in a nest of snakes and vipers. So his own party is a nest of snakes and vipers. No offense, Republicans. I'm talking about Specific individuals who happen to be in his party, not the overall general Republican Party. He actually is living in a nest of snakes and vipers full of people who have ulterior motives. And see the gentleman in the picture, they're, they're kind of kind of got their ears to one another, kind of talking a little quiet so he don't hear. He's just there celebrating they're cheering him on. He loves that. He loves false adulation. He loves false compliments. But they're actually, these people have ulterior motives, and, they're, and, and they actually want to use, this is right out of the interpretation for these cards, guys. These people want to use this person, Trump, who we're referring to, for their own selfish ends because of envy, self-interest, deceitfulness, and they'll use flattery, servility, and empty compliments to do it. 
They have done it, and they will continue to do it for their own ends. And they have false motives towards him, false plans. Okay? So even with his, in his own group, this guy's got to look over his shoulder. And he's kind of looking over his shoulder here in that um, Seven of Hearts card, Man in the Office. He's looking over his shoulder down at the woman on the deck with a spyglass. Okay. I mean, that's just kind of a literal interpretation. <laughs> It also represents this uh, this uh, happiness card of the men cheering on their their new president. I'm gonna say I'm just gonna go with the flow. Also indicates they feel they made a mistake. Maybe they made a mistake backing this person. Maybe they made a mistake um, sealing his rise to the top. Did I just say that? Hmm. How did they seal his rise to the top? They had some sort of connection to his rise to the top. And it's next to the spy card, the three of hearts. Um, and it's next to some other cards we haven't got to yet. Okay. Now, in love. Falsita, back to Falsita. Falsita represents um, infidelity and ulterior motives. A third person. There have been some rumors, I think, about the, the, um, the marriage of Melania and, and, and Donald. So, I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to tell you what the cards say, and that's what they said. Financially, this card warns of false opportunities and fake money, deceitful colleagues, Ponzi schemes, fraud, contraband, swindles. It's fraught with gossip, fraud, slander, and deceit. And it's next to our president. So this describes the character of this man. It warns of a situation that's hiding a trap. It warns of danger that is lurking in the background. It's a card of cunningness. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on down to a card below Falsita, which is a man, a, a man who's mourning um, at someone's grave. This is called the Widower. Uh, I can't pronounce it in, in Italian. I'm not going to try. But this is a very negative card. It's someone who has resigned. So I think this card actually is referring to several different things. Okay, I think this is referring to our our Obama is now um, leaving office. See, he's, he's actually, if he were to travel away from the other cards, he would be leaving the White House. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just like, I'm, I just think this is so literal. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, and he's in mourning. And, and this card also represents the people that are affected by the government, by this president. So I believe the whole country, the majority, there's a lot of people in the country that are mourning the, the, um, the end of this presidency, the end of Obama's presidency. And I did post his picture below the spread because I am definitely mourning his presidency, and I woke up the first thing this morning when I woke up. I'm, before I even thought of, of my own name, I thought, this is Obama's last day, or, or, or it's not even his last day, he's no longer our president, and I was sad. And I think a lot of us are sad. And so the cards are addressing that. I think it represents a couple other things too. Not only the people and how they're feeling in general, not only the people in our own country, but with the, um, the expanse of the Fortuna card, which is kind of like 
you know, everything all over, cosmos, universe, right, expanded next to the um, three of hearts, the woman who is looking over um, into the unknown with a, a spy glass. Um, okay. Sorry, uh, that card actually, I believe, is... Because the spyglass, I didn't tell you this before, the spyglass is actually reversed. It's upside down. So even though she's looking out into the world, it's actually the world is looking at us. So I think the world is also sad that Obama is leaving. And the world is looking to see what's next. What's, what's next for us? What's next for the entire... Because this not only affects our country, it affects the entire world. Okay? This card also is in the center row, the Widower, the Fortuna, and the, um, what did I call this card? The, C, the Three of Hearts, Belvedere. Um, I forget its English name. I'll, 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 get, I'll come to that in a minute. Sorry. But these three cards are um, what's happening at the present moment. And at the very present moment, when I was reading these cards, I had gotten up from the t television set I didn't want to watch the parade, and it just occurred to me, the Fortuna card is holding the Trump and celebrating the Trump, right? And the woman with the spyglass, she's on a deck, and it kind of looks like one of those parade floats. So that just further confirmed to me, this is definitely a reading about our president, and uh yeah, they just wanted to talk. <laughs> the cars wanted to talk today about it. <laughs> um, so back to the widower. This is someone who is resigning. So it is representing Obama. This is a country that is shocked and in, in grief, in bereavement for a loss. They feel like they've lost something. Maybe they lost a foothold. Maybe they lost something that was really important to them. And I think a, a lot of people feel like, a lot of people feel like they have lost something. Like there were some gains that Obama brought, progressive gains in, in not only um, how the country, how, how the government is structured and run and how the country is, um, but how but in how the country is treating its individuals how the country is being inclusive of all people trying to be more inclusive and diversified he represented that and i think now you know the unsupportive family would go back to the upside down white house i don't think the people feel supported that that a lot of people in our country don't feel supported don't feel understood by this will not feel understood by this particular president. That's pretty obvious, but um, they're really sad. I think overall a lot of people are very sad to see our old president go. Um, so, this card represents a man that's over 60. Um... It can represent a man that's over 60, but I, like I said, I think this man is, this card is representing a, a few different things. Obama leaving the office of president and um, the people and how they feel and the world and how they, the world feels in general. A lot of sadness, remorse, and regret. Not feeling, not feeling supported not feeling understood, not feeling cared for, not feeling nurtured. Especially those that have gone through really hard, big hardships in this country, like um, the uh, African Americans and the uh, Hispanics and the Indians, the Native Indians. You know what I mean? It's like the people who've suffered the most for this country? <laughs> don't let me get started. Okay, let me slow down. Let me slow my roll. Um, they don't feel 
particularly nurtured by this new president. Now, this card can sometimes mean a death. Usually it doesn't. It has to be near certain other cards. And I have not learned the advanced combinations yet, but um, I do feel intuitively that next to the uh, card below it, the, um, the Four of Spades, I also believe this card represents, I think this card actually represents a literal death. And... Um, I hate to say that, but I, I, I personally think it's it's probably talking about um, maybe Senior Bush. But let's hope that that's not the case, that the country won't be in mourning for for him as well soon. I um, because I know that he's sick. So let's all wish him well and wish him, give him good energy. Okay, now this card, the widower, again, has so many meanings, and they, they all seem to just flow, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you. This, is, this indicates um, a person who interacts with others who don't like him. They feel a deep dislike and hatred and resentment for this person, and this could, again, it represent not only the people in the country and a lot of people in the world, but also his own constituents, his own cabinet, his own, um, his own party. So the, um, the, the two of hearts, the upside down casa, the house card, the white house that's upside down is a place where one feels isolated and cold. It's a cold environment, like a cold and welcoming public building or a hospital or a mental asylum or, you know, some place that's cold and unwelcoming. You don't want to go in this place. He doesn't want to be this president. <laughs> I think, like I said before, he was surprised that he won. And, um, and he knows that he's not popular. Um, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. <laughs> that feeling, you know, because he's not going to feel supported by the people either. And as a result of his not feeling supported, there's going to be this, for him, he's going to become even more isolated from the people and his concerns. He already has selfish intentions with the falsita above, but he's he's but he needs adulation. He needs false compliments. If he doesn't get it, he won't give you his support. So the more people protest, see the people again, the happiness card, the this could also mean like people um protesting. I, I just feel like it could also mean a protest. The more the people protest, the more he's gonna isolate himself from their needs. He's not going to listen. He's not going to bridge the gap. Because it's a character flaw he has. And this is coming from his perspective as a human being, not necessarily from his policies. I'm not sure what kind of policies going policies he's going to enact to help people or to div d divide people, but him as a person will not feel in his core a need to nurture those that protest him. He'll only hear protests. He won't hear that they're not getting needs met. He'll only hear, you don't like me. I'm going to stop here because this video is getting long and I'll do a part two. Stay tuned for part two.